Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing one of the greats from the early 2000s. This is the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter chronograph, a chronometer chronograph in 41.5 millimeter size. It's a chunky, reliable, old school Omega Dive chronograph that works easily on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Now, I owned the chronometer version of the Seamaster Diver 300, the original Bond watch, so this brings back good memories. You can see it's about 41.5 millimeters, not including crown guards, chronograph pushers, or helium escape valves. The watch is chunky, 15.2 millimeters thick, but not as chunky as the later coaxial planet oceans. Lug to lug, it's not a huge watch at 49 millimeters, but when you add the solid end links to the bracelet, it does swell to 52.6. So I'd say wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. If it's on a strap, about 14 and a half centimeters circumference, probably the lower limit to wear the watch on a bracelet. But what touches the wrist is nicely made. This watch did set the standard back in the day. A uh, supple bracelet, nicely finished with soft satin tones to resist reflection. It is a highly functional watch, and on the underside of the links you can see that the Gaps between the individual link bodies are broad to avoid pinching skin, pulling hair, or trapping heat. It vents far better than a contemporary Rolex Oyster. You can see back in the day, as Omega was beginning to rebuild its brand, it did find ways to economize, like pin sleeves for the individual removable links, but to their credit, pin sleeves are very difficult to back out. You will not be losing them. The clasp set new standards when it bowed in the 1990s. Machined from a solid, this forced Rolex to rethink its stamped oyster clasps. The swing arms are just as sturdy, and so is the pull-out dive extension, which, yes, you can use over some sort of a dive suit, but I always tended to use over a winter sweater or coat in New Hampshire. Very solidly made, secure, and nicely integrated into the end profile of the case. You can see that there is a familiar form about the case with sheer sides satin finished, as well as polished bevels. You know it from innumerable Seamaster and Speedmaster Omegas over the years. That said, I should mention that the profiles of the chronograph pushers only look like screw downs. They are in fact shouldered to give themselves a bit more bolstering and support, as well as a more visually consonant aesthetic to match the shouldered crown guard. You will note that the chronograph can operate in tandem with a dive bezel. So you can actually line up the Omega Seamaster GMT inspired broadsword hands with the bezel pearl, and now you can actually time something zero to 60 minutes even as you're running the chronograph, because the chronograph register only goes up to 30. Let's say you want to time something up to 45 minutes. That calls for a bezel, or you can simply use the bezel if you prefer not to run the chronograph, either for reasons of shortening maintenance intervals, or perhaps because you don't want to draw down your power reserve. You have that second timing organ full time. The action is excellent. You hear it, you feel it, it's crisp, it's positive, and I actually can say that the click on this particular bezel has a little bit less of the resistance than you'll find on the standard Seamaster 300, which is a good thing. Those can be difficult to manipulate with wet, sweaty, or gloved hands. This one has just enough give to satisfy, not enough to frustrate. The dial is simple, but we are past the early Bond Seamaster dials here because you have both an applied Omega marquee and logo as well as applied indices rather than printed. So some of the upscale refinements as Omega marched up market had started to find their way into the watch by the time this model was made. Another feature worth mentioning is that you do have a not coaxial, but chronometer chronograph movement inside this watch. This is the Omega Caliber 3301 automatic winding with a 52 hour power reserve. It is a significant upgrade on the base caliber to include both the 52 hour reserve and column wheel actuation rather than cam. So you have that column wheel actuation as you'd have on a Rolex Daytona or a Zenith El Primero. So it's crisp. Like the bezel action, it's part of the tactile and audible pleasure of using a finely tuned diving machine. Now you also note there is a date at 6 o'clock, and the watch does retain the quick set function for the date, as well as the hacking seconds function to stop the watch and synchronize to a reference time. Still 300 meters water resistant, thanks to screw down case back, screw down crown. 
It's also resistant to blowout of seals and crystals thanks to a screw out helium escape valve. When you thread it out, you saturation divers know what this is for, but it will allow helium from exotic gas mixtures that may accumulate inside the watch during a dive to escape the case without blowing out the seals and the crystal. That's what the helium escape valve does. For everyone else, it's a conversation starter, and you can even make up stories. James Bond once used it as a grenade. Your stories may not be quite as lively, but it makes for some tall tales. The timepiece is tough, it's precise, it's durable, and being a pre-coaxial, anyone can work on it. This is a watch with which to weather the wilds of the world. Get your world journey started with this 300 meter chronograph on your wrist, on the watch box. And we're back with the Omega Seamaster 300 Diver Chronograph. This is a timepiece that is an automatic chronometer chronograph, beautifully bright by night. You can see that luminescent pearl has plenty of glow to match blows with the minute hand. This is important because you can't see the chronograph at night. However, you can use the dive bezel as a timing instrument after dark. Perhaps the best timing instrument of all. I've always said a dive bezel beats a chronograph nine times out of ten. Decide for yourself on the watch box.